In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create IBCS style delta tables using SVGs in Power BI. I'm going to show you how you can use Andre's solution and implement your own data. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So before we start, I just want to give a huge shout out to Andre for this amazing solution. He has a hugely underrated YouTube channel where I found this solution that he was explaining by creating this IBCS compliant charts using the simple matrix or table visuals in Power BI, utilizing just the SVG solution, which is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to leave a link to his solution as well as his YouTube channel so you can check out his other videos as well. So the IBCS is basically a set of standards for designing your charts and tables. There are lots of benefits for following these guidelines. One of them is to easily communicate your data across your stakeholders. And one of the styles in these standards is when you're showing delta, you might want to consider showing the absolute and relative variances between those two values. So here in this example, I'm looking at the IBCS, the current version of it, and this is how it recommends showing different scenarios. So it's comparing the current and previous year using these bars. The gray bar is the previous year and the current is the black bar. This green and red is showing the scale. So how much difference it is compared to the previous year. So green means it's showing more value or it's higher than the previous year. And the red is clearly showing it's less. The relative variance is showing you the percentage so how much change has there has been between those two values between the previous year and the current year. However, using Zebra BI visuals is a paid route, which might not fit your requirements. So today I'm going to show you this solution that Andre has cooked up, which lets you use SVG visuals within your tables to visualize this in Power BI. So first, let me just introduce you to our data here. So we are using the typical Northwind data sets to visualize our data. I've already created a few things here. I've already created a calendar table, which we are using for our purposes today. And I've also created a few measures here to calculate. So we have the sales, which is just calculating the sales and the sales previous month, which just gets the value or the sales for the previous month in context. So in the report here, we have the ability to change the different months. And as you change the month here, so September, it gives you the sales for that month of September and it gives you the previous month sales August. And what we want to do is to show this table or show these values in an IBCS compliant way. So we want to show it in this Delta solution. So to start with, I'm going to leave a link to his GitHub here where you can download the matrix visual. So from here, this is the, the link to the GitHub file. So what you want to do is go and download this IBCS PBIX file. If you click on that and then on the right hand side, you will be able to download the raw file, save it in your local machine and open it. I won't do that because I've already done it before. So here it is. Now I've opened it in my local machine and there's a bunch of different visuals here that is IBCS compliant that you can use. However, for today, we're going to focus on this matrix with three tier charts. There's three elements in this. So there's this comparison bar chart. There's this uh, variance by the actual values and the variance by percentage. And we want to be able to visualize all of these three. And by the way, today, we're just going to focus on how you can use and replace the values from this file using your own data. And I'm not going to explain every single thing because this, this video is going to be too long. However, if you want to learn more about everything else that is happening within these DAX measures, I highly suggest that you check out Andre's video covering it because he's covered it already in such detail. So the first thing what that what we're going 
to do is we're going to look at where these calculations or these measures come from. So there's only three values here, and these three values are different measures, but these measures are built using different measures and different uh, values in the data model. So we're going to look at copying them and then replacing just a few bits in them so that you can use your own data. So we're going to start with the ACPY, so the comparison between the current year and the previous year. I'm going to look for that here. So ACPY SVG. So this is the DAX for that SVG visual. So we're going to copy that. And then we're going to go to our report here, create a new measure. We're going to just leave it as it is. And you'll see that if I hit enter, it will just give me some errors. And that's because it's referencing some values here that uh, we don't have yet. So let's start replacing a few things here. So you can see already there's an average AC, which is where this line is. So if I just show you. So this line here shows you the average of the current sales. And we want to be able to show that. Or It's not that difficult, actually. So let's just look for that here, average. AC. So we're going to copy that and then create it for ourselves. So we're just going to replace a few of these things. So first of all, we're going to change instead of check of salesperson, which doesn't exist, we're going to use the categories here. And the AC would be just the sales measure that we've created. Okay, then we're just going to keep replacing the values here until the error disappears. So now you can see that there's no more error there. So let's replace a few things here. So it has one value. This needs to be category name because we want to see the categories. That's that's the kind of the different categories that we want to show on our Delta table. So category name here. And as well, all selected here, we're just going to use categories and here as well. Where you see AC, that is basically the current sales value. So we're going to change instead of AC, we're going to change it to sales. And then the PY is basically a previous year, but in our context is previous month. So we're going to change it to sales PM. And then the last thing I can see here is the SVG style, which is just the properties of the actual SVG image. So let's go back to this one and look for that So SVG style. As you can see, it's basically just like what the font family is, how big it is and the alignment of that image. So we're just going to create that one. Copy and paste. And there you go. So you can see that now there's no more error, which means that we are pretty much ready to use this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, change the data category into an image URL. That's so that Power BI knows that this is an SVG image that we're going to visualize here. And then I'm just going to copy this table here. And then I'm going to remove the sales and sales PM. And then we're going to just drag it in there. And there you go. So there's looks like there is some looks a bit weird. And that's because of the image size itself. So we're going to change that right now. So first of all, I just want to update the SVG style here because that's what controls the font size. So maybe let's change that to 12 so that it matches the size of our categories here. And then on the actual table itself, you can change the image size at the bottom here you can change it to 25 height and uh, 250 perhaps on width. So that will just make sure that there's enough space to visualize those uh, those bars. And there we go. So you see it works. If the total doesn't make sense, you can disable that too. And uh, there you go. So you have your comparison tables or your comparison bars here. As you select the months, it changes and shows you the difference between the current month and the previous month.
So now, and that's pretty much the steps that you need to take in order to use this solution for yourself. You get the DAX measure for that SVG and replace the different elements in there to use your data instead. So it's pretty simple. So let's go through the rest so that you can see how I could or you could do it as well. So let's go back to that file. Let's look for this PY one, which is Delta PY. So it's this one. We'll just simply copy this. New measure, paste. And as before, it will have some issues here, but we're just going to replace them. So categories name here. Categories name. These need to be categories like this. Delta PY doesn't exist yet, as well as the average Delta PY. So we'll need to add that in a little bit. The category is here. OK, so let's look for these Delta PY and average Delta PY. So this one. New measure. And instead of AC minus PY, it will be sales minus Sales PM. Last one is the average delta PY. Copy that, create a new measure, and then replace these. So categories AC is sales, PY is sales previous month. So now we change that into not that one, it's this one. Change this into an image URL. Drag it into our table here, and there you go. So you can now see those values, the change in those values. And let's do the last one just so that we can complete this, this view. So the last one is the delta PY percentage. So let's copy that new measure let's paste and let's replace the values once more categories okay and then we don't have these two which we need to create but that's fine so let's look for them. So this one, average delta. Paste delta PY exists and PY is just the sales previous month. And then the last one that we need is the average delta as a percentage. So copy and paste, replace the values. Sales PM for this one, hit enter, and then go to the SVG, again, change it into an image URL, and then drag it into your table. And there you go. So you have pretty much a working table here following IBCS standards, showing the delta difference between the current month that you selected against the previous year. What I really like about this solution is that the sorting works as well which means that if you want to see what is the highest or the lowest impact by percentage or by value, you can use that like this. And it's fully interactable as well. So that means that because it's a matrix, you can just simply add tooltips if you wanted to add more context into this. And um, yeah, you, it's not using any custom visuals at all. So maybe last thing is obviously just updating all of these styling options to make it look more like the IBCS standards or removing all of these highlightings or just making sure that the titles are, are in the middle. So you can do that manually. Or what I like to do is just copy this visual here, paste it. Now it's going to say it's broken, which is fine. We're just going to copy the format of it. So hit the format painter and then select your table. And there you go. So 
You just need to update those titles, but as you can see, it's now updated to those settings. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how easy it is to implement IBCS style Delta tables in your Power BI reports without using any custom visuals at all. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I have to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.